As cities around the world grow, we as the golf industry must ask ourselves, how are we growing? How are we adapting to the changing landscape of how we live and how we recreate? And maybe most importantly, are we asking the right questions? I think the main issues with urban golf is just there's a lack of golf courses in certain places and just to have really good facilities that are going to welcome people to the game. I think golf is one of those sports where the stereotype of what golf is or what a golfer is is so hard to redo. And that's why we really have to start thinking out of the box to give golf a different image. And not just one, but several images that people can aspire to. We got to the point, you know, where we just thought, well, we'll just open it and they'll come. Well, there, you know, that's, that's not quite as true as it used to be. A lot of people say these days the words grow the game. And a lot of people talk about how golf is on a decline. Do you experience that, one, and two, where is that coming from? Is it true? We're sitting in the middle of Los Angeles, California. Keep in mind that in this county, the, the supply was basically been fixed since the mid-1970s. So from the mid-1970s up until 2004, with a fixed supply, the demand went up geometrically, and now it's come down a little bit. I think our challenge is we want to make the people who are playing out there right now look like the people out on the street and on the 405. The same groups, the same demographics, that's what municipal golf should look like. What Larry said rang true to me as a person who came to golf needing the public spaces to play in. Oftentimes when you hear about the decline, it's because our net used to be a number and now it's down 30%. There is no net to the picnic area, there is no net to the baseball diamonds, there's no net to the soccer fields. They don't make money. If highest and best value of all property in a place like, like Los Angeles was our watchword, we would have nothing but skyscrapers, we wouldn't have open space, we wouldn't have parks, now we wouldn't have municipal golf courses. This is a Muni. Good course. Very good course. Wilson, Harding. The courses of the LA City. Good courses. You're not talking about something below. You know, Torrey Pines. It's a Muni. Golf is a fundamentally middle class activity and it's an aspirational activity. director of the First Tee Metropolitan New York. So this is our classroom of the First Tee where we have the students from our program come and gather before they have their class and we'll teach them some life skills and some etiquette and things like that before they go out and then we'll send them off on the golf course. But this is where our staff gathers, it's where our kids come and it's a place that's strictly for them. So I, I think that what makes Mashlu a lot like so many other golf courses is that it's a place where people come and gather to play and they really just want to just enjoy the game of golf and I think that that's one of the things that really makes it so much fun is that there's no frills and everyone here comes together and that everyone's welcome. I think the main issues with urban golf is just there's a lack of golf courses in certain places and just to have really good facilities that are going to welcome people to the game. I think that a lot of the golf courses now, hopefully with Beth Page and others, that I think the municipalities are recognizing the assets they have. I think that traditionally they haven't been managed in the proper way, but I think that as greater attention is shown on this and that there's uh, that it shows the, the value of these properties and some of them are being in jeopardy. I think the municipalities are understanding that and making it better so that they're well run, they're well maintained, and I think that that's something that's gonna really help the game in the future. When we talk about the future of the game, going to public courses is good, but we found a place that's far from a golf course and where you would least expect to have a discussion about what the future of the game needs to heed. teammates they encourage me to do better but like golf is just like a fun sport it's a great sport some people may say it's not and it's boring but I say it's it's fun and people should try it more often you know you think of golf you think of like silky sand traps and like 
green grass and there's really none of that around here. So we just kind of like work with what we got. So we have, yeah, we like the clubs we have were donated by the first team, like other individuals around New York City. But this is not entirely like a, it, it's not like this full-fledged nonprofit. This is more just like you're on the streets and you're selling mixtapes. Oh yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. Like it's uh, definitely DIY. I love it. You know? When Teddy first came into my Spanish class, he had forums about golf and everybody was like, like, ew, they don't like playing golf. <laughs> but I was there with my best friend and she was like, we should do it. And I was kind of iffy at first, but then I was like, why not? Let me give it a try. So we ended up going, me, my friend, and Lorena. And we liked it. Like, I struggled at first a little bit, but I kind of liked it. Like, I felt relieved. Everything was fun. And usually, like, when we have games and stuff, everybody would be like, like, I don't know. They didn't really like the sport, but that didn't stop me. Something different about golf is you're your own coach and your own ref, basically. Unlike basketball and softball, there's a coach as a ref. But in golf, you're like independent. You do it on your own. That's what I like. Sometimes it's competitive. At the end of the day, it's still fun. You know, we do our thing. Win or lose, we still, we're still a team. 10 miles as the crow flies from this makeshift driving range, there is a story of turning one man's trash into another community's treasure. A Kemper Sports managed property that was funded by Hudson County. Skyway is indeed a Cinderella story. Skyway Golf Course, what is that to you? It's the end product of an idea that we had for a long time. And uh, those of us who, who want to play a uh, regular golf course here, there was none. Skyway Golf Course was a public project. It's the first public golf course in Hudson County. This was a toxic dump, not a legal one. This is the one where you had a refrigerator that you wanted to get rid of and you didn't know what to do with. You'd put it on somebody, borrow somebody's truck, you'd come out here and you'd dump it here. This was contaminated, it was filthy. So to envision a golf course uh, on that was a little strange. There was nothing on the property up until maybe in the 70s, they built a driving range there. We started some discussions to fix up the driving range. I was one of those guys, every Sunday I would come out here. There's a bagel place down the road. I'd buy a bagel, cup of coffee, come down here, get a big bucket of balls and stay here for about two hours sitting in uh, Galba. And there were other like firemen, teachers, uh, cops, retired guys. It was like a little club. The course is challenging, but fair. It doesn't beat you up, but it makes you think. You've got three threes, three fours, three fives. Am I correct, Steve? To see a place like this, I was skeptical because they said, ah, what's going to happen? But when it was done, they did it the right way. And uh, they have a facility here that they can be proud of. And that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. So is Skyway your idea? Did you make this happen? I like we better than I in, in everything that I do. I was the one who thought it was a really good idea. You know, I took the first swing here. You did not. I did. And what do you think I did? Top with, it. With a yeah. <laughs> yeah. But by far, one of the best examples of the golf course as the underdog, restoring the community's soul and uniting it as one, remains the story of Goat Hill Park in California. At what point do you look at the benefit you've received just from the community and the feeling of togetherness? At what point does that become the more important thing as a person on earth rather than a golf business guy? Literally the whole reason was to try to make a place that it's kind of what it's turned out to be. I mean, I, I, I pinch myself a lot of times when, you know, because it's been a lot of, it's been a lot of work. Yeah. But it's so many people have come together. I mean, the whole community's come together. I mean, it's been, it's been work for everything. And, and, the, and the thing that's so rewarding is how everyone has come together. These cart paths, they weren't done with the contractor. They were done with the guys that play golf out here, that that's what they do. There's so many little things like that with, with Goat Hill Park that are just, you know, you just can't make up. It's amazing. When did you come up with the idea for the playground? Well, it's in our original proposal that we put in with the city council. So we felt like the whole play here was to make it a community-based, you know, situation where 
kind of based off like Scotland and Ireland where they, the right. little communities, they have those cool little kids courses that kids play for free, you know? And so we put it on there originally. We definitely wanted to get to it, but it took four years, Yeah, you know? We changed the name to Goat Hill Park and Park was a very key part of our strategy because we want people to feel like they don't even have to play golf. They can just come out and hang out in the park, you know? What do you think it would take for more people to be inspired to create this on their own? I think just the awareness of it, just the awareness and maybe if they saw, you know, the results of people really enjoying it. The challenges are the same. It's global. Just the urbanization of countries and population just is a difficulty for golf, but I think there are ways we can overcome that. Being too traditional within the industry uh, turns a lot of people off. I think that just having a game that reflects what America looks more like. Once upon a time in Los Angeles, a lot of Los Angeles County golf courses did offer free lessons. Back when Ronald wow. Palmer, yeah, that was part of the way of building a market. So we needed to build markets then. We, we paid attention to that. For those of us that are, to some extent, in control or have some influence on the future of golf, what do we need to take from your experience here in order to affect a positive future for how golf is used in urban environments? It's a good question uh, there. And I, I think the most important thing is to introduce golf to a population that didn't really have a chance to get introduced into it. When you come out and you play golf, you forget about like two, four hours of your day and just relax. The course is great. It's a beautiful course. course. Unbelievable course. It's a very challenging course, and every time we come out here, we're like, darn it, I should have used the eight instead of the nine. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So we, uh, you know, we enjoy it. It's, it's well kept. Bad day golf, but then a good day at work. Right. Anytime, anytime.